Hey everybody, I'm back at it again with another great video for you all. If you guys are new here, welcome. This is going to be a great video. I, again, went to Mount Shasta. If you haven't seen the previous video, I recommend go checking that out. But I went to Mount Shasta and I did two more hikes over there. So I'm going to be displaying those two here. The two trails are called Heart Lake Trail from Castle Lake and then the Burning Falls Trail Loop Trail. Um, I'm basically going to be going into detail after the video. So I'm going to show you the best of the best, what I thought was gorgeous of between the two, and then kind of giving you a detailed breakdown of my thoughts on it. Um, I personally might like my previous video a little slightly more than this one in terms of the views. Uh, Birdie Falls was gorgeous, but I might like McLeod. I don't know. You can be the judge of that after you see both videos and check them out and give me comments of what do you prefer. But yeah, stay tuned till the end of the video. That's where I give you a detailed breakdown of everything and my thoughts on everything of each trail and what you expect if you plan on visiting or doing either of these hikes. Enjoy the video, hope to see you at the end of it. Yeah, I feel no better Running through my mind when it's your choice of weather Raining all the time, oh yeah, I feel no better Falling down face first You take to heart my last words, guess tomorrow's gonna hurt Oh yeah, I feel no better Running through my mind, holding you on red letters I'm sick to death of sympathizing, I'll endeavor To keep us on the right track Tonight we'll stay together I will feel no, I will feel no better I'm sick to death of sympathizing I'll endeavor To keep us on the right track Tonight we'll stay together But I will feel no I will feel no better breakdown of my thoughts of the hike so the first one i'm going to go into detail is burning falls loop and the reason why i'm going to go into detail burning falls loop is because it really wasn't a hike it was more of walking around and just kind of enjoying the trails and all the amenities kind of that the park had um, so i would say please get there as early as possible once they open because when i got there i got there kind of midday it was packed and the entrance to get to the waterfall was long it just kind of like <laughs> went forever on the road uh, so what some people did and also what I did is I parked on the side of the road and just kind of went parked my car there and walked from there to the park and I was able to enjoy the waterfalls and do all that so highly recommend if you want to enjoy this waterfall please go there early uh, there's a ton of amenities on there there's bathrooms there there's like souvenirs you can get they sell ice cream there which was really really nice <clears throat> so you can enjoy a lot of the things there uh, but if you want to get the best experience i would say please go there as early as possible once they open up because it gets really really uh, packed in there and there was a ton of people so i when i got there i kind of like enjoyed the waterfall saw really everything that the park had to offer and then just kind of left just because there were so many people because i went around midday so please get there early if you really want to enjoy it the other one I'm going to break down is Heart Lake 
trail from Castle Lake. And this one was actually pretty tough. And I'm going to kind of go into a little bit of breakdown of it because I track all my hikes two ways through the Ultra Zone through the Apple Watch. So according to the Ultra Zone app, it was 3.2 miles. The elevation gain was 879 feet. Moving time, one hour and 48 minutes. Calories burned, 939. According to the Apple Watch, it was 3.2 miles. Elevation gain was 959 feet. Total time, two hours and 14 minutes. Average heart rate was 98 beats per minute. Active calories was 589 and total calories was 818. It doesn't seem like a long hike. It's pretty easy, but it's deceiving because you start at a really, really high elevation gain. I believe you start off around 5,000. So I got upwards close to 6,000. And this was in, this made it a lot more difficult um, than obviously if you were just to try this out by yourself, meets the eye. So um, I would recommend please carry enough water because you're going to be exhausted pretty early on once you're starting because it's a, it's a steady incline. I wouldn't say it's super steep. It's just slowly you're kind of going up there, but the views are go gorgeous. It's amazing. I, I personally love this hike because at the end I was able to see Mount Shasta all the way across and also the lake at the bottom. Um, and I kind of veered off the trail. Another thing to note, uh, please download the All Trails app if you're planning on doing this hike specifically. And I kind of say this with all my hikes, please download the All Trails app and have that in the background because at least specifically with this one, the trails aren't as clear. There's like little signs here and there, but you, if you're not really paying attention, you can kind of miss them. So having that in the background just reassures you that you're going the right way and that you're not kind of like veering too far off. I personally veered off and I went into higher elevation game, which is why I got those beautiful, gorgeous videos that you saw. Um, so you can do that, but please still have it there just so you know like how to get back and that you don't veer too far off or then you're too exhausted to come back and then that could be obviously problematic. Uh, but this one was gorgeous. I personally loved it. I, I love the challenge of being in high elevation. Um, it was great. Personally, I love kind of like the physically demanding hikes um, just because I like to push myself. So this one, if you're the same as me, if you like kind of a little bit of challenge physical in terms of uh, elevation gain and testing your cardio, this is a huge one. Highly recommend it. Another thing to note when you're if you're planning on doing burning falls is if you don't want to experience all the high traffic, I recommend watching my other video with the McLeod one. I'm going to link it up. I personally would say I like the McLeod one a little bit more than Burning Falls. And I think the reason why is because it wasn't as heavily trafficked. The McLeod one was gorgeous. You you can get in the water, you can swim. And Burning Falls, I believe you can do it too, but it was just so packed and it's just like a hub for tourists. So everybody goes there. Um, if I had to choose between the two, I might choose, probably will choose McLeod just because... I don't know, it captivated me a little bit more than Burning Falls, even though Burning Falls was gorgeous and it was massive. Uh, but tell me in the comments below if you do either or if you believe Burning Falls is better than McLeod, let me know in the comments and your thoughts. If you believe McLeod, just like I do, is better than Burning Falls, let me know in the comments as well. And if you reach this point to the video, I wanna say thank you for watching it all the way through. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any hikes that I should be doing. I wanna kinda figure out more hikes. I'm thinking of going maybe to Utah at some point, maybe Arizona, doing some hikes over there, um, exploring, seeing what else I can do. Uh, but yeah, let me know if, if you have any recommendations or suggestions where I should go around the country or even outside of the country. I'm, I'm Hopefully once things clear up and you're a little bit safer, we're able to travel a little bit more. But again, thank you for watching to the end of the video. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.